This is the AOC 28 inch 4K monitor and it does not have a vase mount. We're going to take it apart and see if we can fix that. First we're going to take off the base. Luckily they made that very easy and convenient. Guitar pick to the rescue! So this is how we let the warranty out. Suppose you could also use a low-tech solution like a credit card or something. Boo. We just about got it. Guitar pick for the win. Voila! It's clean. We can easily change that mount out for something VESA compatible. Let's do it. We're just going to bring out a piece of aluminum with a flat uh, piece and a couple of holes cut in it so that we can mount a plate with the appropriate VESA holes cut in it and get this thing mounted, you know, correctly. So back to this thing. Looks like we have a steel plate with some screws, springs, etc. We're going to take that steel plate off. So far so good. Looking like they made this easy. Okay. Let's see if we can feed this guy out. Just like so. Let's see if it fits. It fits all the way. We have successfully we have successfully removed the mount. The silly little arm. Now let's uh go make a real one. We need to explore the very real possibility that they made this easy enough for us to just unscrew these screws and have a plate ready to go. That would be so nice of them. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's flat at the bottom. There are some little pockets for these little tabs to really positively engage. I don't think we need to even worry about those. Let's just go cut a flat thing to hang on here. This is going to be easy. So easy. This is the stock base. I was thinking to myself we could machine this or we could actually cast one. I, I don't feel like breaking out the aluminum casting right now, but I could do zinc casting with a torch in a pot pretty quickly and easily. So I could get this done. And zinc would probably be strong enough to make this mount work. This piece, the sort of neck piece, came off with a little guitar pick action in here, thusly, and just pinch it off all the way down. And it's kind of separating itself now. Meet your actual monitor stand. There it is. Man, they could have made a vase mount for this so easily. I bet they did. I bet it's out there somewhere. Anyway, a little socket. Here's the arm thingy. Fits in there nicely, yeah, whoop de doo Doesn't rotate, it's a good keyed fit. Got some wards there on the side. Yeah. So, we're gonna try to do a rough sand casting of this part in zinc, because I'm lazy. Failing that, we will just machine a part that roughly fits in here, that has the holes in the right spot, and goes from this top edge down to the tops of these wards. Maybe we'll machine out these wards so it gets a tight fit. I don't know. It doesn't actually matter. Once we get the screws in there and bolt it down, it's not going anywhere. Because this is a quick 30 minute project and I live in the US of A, I'm a little short on metric screws that will plug these screw holes, so I'm going to end up with sand in my screw holes. You know how that can be. Because this quick project has a pretty high failure rate, and we don't particularly care, this is kind of the backup plan, let's use the mostly new Petrobond from the last burn. A word of warning. This cup is plastic. Casting into a plastic cup is always a bad idea. That said, let's get started. Lots of Quaker oats. Yeah, we're not going to mold this or anything. We're just going to shove it in there, pack it pretty firmly, and then cram the part in there. Super simple, super fast, super quick. That's pretty firm. So much so that I doubt I'll be able to get the part in there. But we'll try it. Nice and deep. Give ourselves a lot of extra working room. See if that at all resembles the part we need. 
Not bad. You can't see that, but it's not bad. The whole thing just came out of the cup. That's awesome. That is quality. Yeah, it's not packed hard enough. I'm going to put it back in the cup. Maybe we'll pack it. Maybe we'll just do it anyway. Oh, yeah, we're definitely doing it anyway. Uh, doing it again, I mean. Ha! Not anyway. Again! Pack it harder this time. Okay, that's actually pretty hard. Yeah, boo. Cool. Our screw holes are not full. Okay. In we go. Uh, let's put it in the middle like normal people. That is very firm this time. Quite firm. Okay. So what we got there. A couple of sandies coming out. Okay. That is worth pouring. Let's do it. Go get the zinc. So this propane can is going to serve as our zinc crucible. I'm going to get this off the table so I don't totally destroy it. Get this off the table so it doesn't catch on fire. Okay, now the trick is this zinc block is huge. This is a very big ingot. I think this one came from a lamp. But you can get zinc from wheel weights, uh, lamps, cheap die cast stuff, all kind of crud. The trick is, this is going to suck up all of our heat, so hopefully we'll be able to melt off just a couple corners because we don't need that much. This is not going to work. Sucking up too much heat. Okay. I was able to find some much smaller zinc ingots I had, and we are ready to pour. So there's our zinky in there. We just melted it with the torch. Here we go. Hopefully we don't melt the cup. Okay. So far, so great. Looks good. I don't have anywhere to put this extra zinc. Let's see if this is all frozen yet. Oh, we're good. Got a little bit back out anyway. That should come out fairly nice. Zinc is pretty nice for casting. It's not great, and we didn't do a good job preparing it, but it might be adequate. We'll see. Okay. Well, I went to eat a nutritious dinner. It's a lovely zinc ingot. That'll be nifty later. It's cool to the touch already. Zinc is usually pretty cool. Anyway. This one, I suspect, will be a big gas bubble at the bottom, because that's just my luck. Let's peel it out and see. Okay. Well, that looks like a monitor base to me. We'll clean it off. We'll uh, get a few close-ups. Take a look. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, you know, it's a little bad. It's not perfect. There we go. Thing actually looks pretty good. Yeah, not too many unacceptable voids. A little bit of crap there from some sand that stuck to the original part on its way out. That's a non-critical dimension anyway, so it doesn't matter. Really the face of this thing and this area right here is what matters. You can see there's some sand there. I'll take a brass brush and uh, brush that garbage out of there. Yeah, cleans up nice, don't it? A little rough, but I think it'll get the job done. Dimensions look good. All these dimensions look good. These little tabs formed very nicely. These little holes will be nice guides when we do drilling and tapping. We'll need to get a metric tap to match the screw pitch on there already. Or new screws. I don't know. We'll see how it fits. Okay, just need to cut these grooves a little deeper. There's a groove here and a groove here that has a companion part on the other side. We need to get these a little bit better defined before the part will fit. Check our fit. We still are off somewhere. No, 
Well, something in there is no good. We're going to see if we can identify the high spots. We're going to sharpie the possible high spots. We're going to watch for the sharpie to rub off when we try to mate them together. It's pretty good. In fact, that's that's certainly close enough. It smashes in there to size, which is perfect. He yeah, has a few worn spots in there. We'll file those down and then we'll call it good. Alrighty. See how that fit up is. That is pretty darn good. I'm going to put a regular thread pitch in there. I'm going to put uh, 1024 in there instead of whatever metric pitch was in there before. So I'm thinking I'm going to chuck this in the milling machine and just mill it off flat. Okay, we have a pretty nice square surface on top of there where we can thread a plate. It's pretty. Deburr that edge, should be nice. Not perfect, but it'll get the job done. We have holes on both sides suitable for tapping 1034. 1034. 1024. My battery is almost dead, so I have to be quick. But uh, we have screws in both sides. This is the one that matches what was there. These are 0.625 apart from each other. That's all that matters. Uh, we'll put a VESA plate on here. And this will go into the monitor and screw in. These are all now 1024 instead of whatever that metric pitch was. So I should be able to find some nice uh, 1024 screws that I can sink in. So we finished building the mount. This is the part that goes inside the monitor. Let's get a little closer. There we go. This is the part that goes inside the monitor, the hinge that pivots normally on the stand. This is the zinc part that we cast. This is just an aluminum plate. That's uh, 5 eighths of an inch apart, those screws. And these. this is all 1024 screws. I accidentally drilled these uh, too big. We'll just probably put a nut on the other side. And if we absolutely have to, we can rebuild this plate anytime because this is outside the monitor. I'd say our casting came out pretty well. That's what we ended up with. This is what we started with. We made a casting of that that fits in there. And now we can throw this away or do whatever we want with it. So now we have to put it back together. Sweet. There it is. Looks nice. Should just barely fit that aluminum plate right there. So I'll just loose fit these for now. There we go. 
we have a vase mount. Let's put it back together. Okay. Now I have my monitor back. Better than it was. Seems pretty stable to me. That is a big theory. I think so too, buddy. I think so too. Daddy, are they going Let's to put sure. that on the back? Yes, I'm just going to make sure that this plate fits over these holes. They should be 75 millimeters apart. And that is a perfect fit. The most perfect fit ever. Cool. That's easy. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you mount a 28 inch AOC on a VESA mount. The right way. So the AOC U2879VF 28 inch 4K monitor actually mounts quite nicely on a VESA mount. I have no idea why AOC didn't provide a mount for that 